Mark chapter 7, chapter 3, excuse me, in verse 7. Say amen if you have it. Mark 3 and 7, the word of the Lord declares, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake. And a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all that he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many. So that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. And whenever the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. But he gave them strict orders not to tell who he was. Lord, we thank you this morning for your word that is already in this house. Your Bible says that you sent your word and that you healed people. We pray that the healing word that heals, that delivers, that sets free, would reach every heart and every life in this room this morning by the power of your spirit. Let your word accomplish the purpose this morning for which it was sent and for which it comes out of my mouth in the name of Jesus. Everyone said amen Amen. and amen. Before you're seated, I want you to turn to two people and just tell them push. Ah, don't push him, but just tell him push. Amen. And you may be seated in the house of the Lord. We have been in a series uh, for this month called The Touch of Faith. How many of you know that by now that the Bible says that to every man has been given a measure of faith? You don't have to procure faith. You don't have to buy faith. You don't have to incorporate faith. Uh, Faith has been given to you. Well, what is faith? Faith is the Greek word pistis, P-I-S-T-I-S. The ability to believe. Everybody say faith is is. the ability to believe. believe. Say with your mouth, I have have. the ability to believe. I have have. faith. Faith. And faith Faith. accomplishes things. Look at your neighbor and tell him faith gets things done. The story that we read this morning with regard to Jesus, is very similar to what we've been dealing with. We've been talking about how he healed the woman with the issue of blood because she reached out and touched him. We looked at the crowds last week as they reached out and touched him. And this morning, I want to just get deep into this subject for just a few moments and just enlighten you and inform you. But most of all, I want to inspire you to believe. Most of all, I want you to use your faith, grab a hold of what God has already put inside of you for the purpose of knowing that you can and that you will be healed by the power of Almighty God. Let me just say that this morning very, very clearly that we're a church who still believes in the healing God. In a delivering God. I know a lot of churches don't preach a healing God. That the, the, the cessationist church that tells you he doesn't do those things anymore. My Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that if he healed then, he heals now. If he delivered then, he'll deliver now. If he saved then, he'll save now. If he'll meet the need of those yesterday, he'll meet your need today. I believe with all of my heart that whatever you came in here with, you're about to get rid of it by the power of the Holy Holy Ghost, that you will leave here changed, that you will leave here transformed, that you will leave here set free by the awesome hand of God. If you believe that even a little bit, go ahead and shout hallelujah. The story that we deal with marks the beginning then of a theme that weaves its way through the gospels. And it is this. It is Jesus' popularity with people. How many of you know that whenever good stuff happens, you look to the source of the good stuff and you go, hey, I like that. Jesus was healing. Jesus was delivering. Jesus was feeding multitudes and people were following him in record number. Thousands upon thousands would come from every hamlet and hill to go and see him and to go be touched and be blessed by his power and by his presence. Uh, We know that once the miracle stopped, Because he went to the cross, then they left. We know that they said, oh, he's not who he thought he was. But I came to tell somebody that when he got off the cross, he rose up with all power in his hand. And that he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so that the things that he did yesterday, he can do today. 
And there is this popularity then that surrounded him. People thronged to him. People went from miles around just to go see him and to hear him and to listen to him, to sit at his feet. I'm, I'm glad for people who like to sit at Jesus' feet. I'm, I'm glad for the praisers, but I, I, I really have an appreciation for worshipers. Worshippers know how to sit. Worshippers know how to be quiet. Worshippers know how to glean and to grasp what God is saying to them. Is there a worshiper in the room this morning? If you are, say hallelujah. I be one. And so we see that people are following Jesus everywhere and from every place. And this popularity then characterizes his ministry. And in this narrative that we read, talking about where he was and what he was doing, on the Sea of Galilee, in the North Shore, the Bible says that he had healed many, and there were people crowding around him, so much so that people were pushing forward to touch him. Amen. This narrative tells us something. Jesus' healings mm -hmm. and exorcisms were the root of his appeal. Yes. People will flock and throng to see people for different reasons. These people were coming for one reason, and that was this. He does two things. He heals and he takes authority over demons. Oh, yeah. See, those were a real present issue back then. Well, guess what? They still are, but, you know, we call them different things now. We, we paint them with a different, but we, call them, we don't call them demons. We just call them bad feelings now, you know. But, but believe me, demons still exist. They're real. And there's only one thing that can deliver you and deliver anyone from demonic power, and that's the power of Jesus Christ. Jesus is characterized and notarized then for these two distinctives. He can heal and he can deliver. Uh, back in the old days, we used to call him a healer and a deliverer and a bondage breaker and a burden carrier and a, ah, call me in the midnight hour and I, I, I'll be there. Just, just ah, when, when it seems like it, it, there is no way, I will make a way. Watch me do it. Guess what? He's still the same. And so it is that Jesus has these two characteristics concerning his ministry and people throng to see him. Huge crowds come from all over Galilee, motivated by two things. Number one, their hope in his miracle power. And two, their amazement at his spiritual authority. Hope in his miracle working power. And two, amazement at his spiritual authority. I have traveled the world preaching the gospel. One of my favorite places to preach around the world is in Argentina. And I'll be going back there, the Lord willing, this year, traveling again, seeing thousands upon thousands healed, delivered, and set free by the power of Jesus Christ. I've seen people come out of wheelchairs. I've seen people with blind eyes open. I've seen deaf ears pop open. I've seen people with maladies of every kind be healed by the power of the living Christ. I've seen demonic, demoniacs set free by the power of Jesus. First time I went to Argentina, I wasn't a novice at it, thank God. This was 15 years ago. But I'd had dealings with dem demons for a long time. I knew how to deal with demonic spirits. I grew up seeing them. I grew up uh, being, uh, being familiar with the activity and seeing deliverance take place. So God had prepared me early on. I remember I was preaching in a church about 25,000 people in Rosario, Argentina. And at the end of the service, I called people forward, and people came streaming forward to receive the power of God. That church is now about doubled in size. I'm going back there this year. And I saw these people as they were gathered in the front to receive. I began ministering to people, and I came up to this one individual, this young man. And I laid hands on him, and he backed up when I went to lay hands on him. I said, oh, we're going to have an issue now. And I saw him, and I could see the, the evil in his face, on his countenance. I could see the, the, the demonic power coming out of his eyes. And I saw that he was demon-possessed, clearly, succinctly. And I went to lay hands on him again, and he backed up again. I said, come here, ven pa' acá. He looked at me, he said, no. I said, come here. He said, no. I said, I'm coming after you. So I went toward him, I laid hands on him, and he began to fight with me and wrestle with me. And I said, I didn't come all the way to Argentina to do the tango, buddy. We're going to get you delivered right now. 
I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the nombre de Cristo Jesus, I declare you set free. I bind every demonic spirit that runs rampant in your soul and in your mind and has taken authority over your very, very life. I declare you now free in the name of Jesus. I didn't remonstrate. I didn't hold a committee meeting. I didn't hold a board meeting to decide whether or not that man should be set free. I just used the words of Jesus. I said, go, come out of him now. In the name of Jesus. I laid hands on him and all of a sudden he hit the ground with a thud. Now the thing about that place was this. They had linoleum floors. Concrete under it. No nice carpeting like you're on today. So that if you fall, well you know, break your fall. little cushion there. Oh no, no cushion. There was hard concrete with linoleum on top. He fell with a thud that everybody in that place heard. I mean, it echoed throughout the entire church. It was a sanctuary, huge place. And the sound echoed. I looked at him. I was sure that blood was going to come pouring out of the back of his head. I could see the headlines. Evangelist from America goes to Argentina and kills an Argentinian. In fact, I watched him and he laid there for probably 10 to 15 minutes, something like that, as I ministered to the rest of the hundreds who came forward to receive the power of God. When I finally went over to him and I saw him and I looked and he got up, completely healed, completely delivered, completely set free. No longer bound. He grabbed me, hugged me, and he began to tell me how much he loved me in Spanish. And I, the the first thing I did was I turned him around. I wanted to see if there was a bump on his head. Don't make me lie. I turned him around. I said, well, hallelujah, I did one of those, you know. No bump, no scar, no mark, no blood, completely whole, completely safe, but not only whole on the outside, whole on the inside. Why? Because you and I serve a God who can set anybody free no matter what. I saw that all through my life and all through my ministry, and I see it over and over again i never forget being in Africa. I was preaching in Kenya in a crusade, an outdoor crusade. About some thousands people of people gathered there. Meetings were having great, great import and great impact in this little community, this little village called Suneka. And I was preaching there night after night and people were getting saved, people were getting delivered, and people were getting healed and set free by the power of God. I will never forget the, the night that uh, the, the one of the... The bishops there brought his daughter to me in his arms. And he said, Bishop, that's what they call me over there. They call me Bishop. Bishop, he said, my daughter is dying of malaria. About a 10-year-old little girl, she was there, her body limp, laying there, suffering, high fever, stricken with malaria. And I said, give her to me. I grabbed her and I held her in my arms. I said, in the name of Jesus, I come against this illness. I come against this sickness. I come against this thing that has stricken her and grabbed a hold of her body. I come against this in the name of Jesus, this infirmity. I bind you in Jesus' name. I command you to loose her now in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing. I speak the anointing. I release it now in Jesus' mighty name. I handed that little girl back to her father. The next night of the crusade, we began to get ready. I got up onto the pulpit, and all of a sudden, this little girl came running down the aisle as fast as she could. And I didn't know who it was. The closer she got, I realized that's the little girl I held in my arms last night who was dying of malaria. And she ran up. She grabbed a hold of me. She said, Bishop, 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 I'm healed. I'm healed. Jesus healed me. Somebody ought to give him a praise right now because that same God who healed then can heal today and tomorrow and forever. While I was in that meeting, we saw the power of God moving greatly. One night of the crusade that we were there was almost the last night and people were thronging and flocking to this venue. 
And all of a sudden, I stood on the platform because I saw some activity and some commotion. And I could see that the crowd was scattering and scurrying. And I didn't understand why. There were, it seemed to be almost as though somebody had, had dropped a bomb in, in, in the middle of, of the venue and people just running everywhere trying to get away. And I looked clearly to see what I could see and examine and, and assess the situation. And I saw a man probably about seven feet tall. Dressed in the headdress and the garb of a witch doctor. And he stood there with all his regalia. Draped in evil. Draped in darkness. Draped in satanic and demonic power. He had a live snake wrapped around his neck. A large python wrapped around his neck. And he stood there and the people began running and scurrying away. And I asked one of the pastors, I said, who is that? They said, oh, that's the most powerful witch doctor in this community. He's come here to stop you. The, no, the word has gone out. He's heard about you. People are leaving him, and they're coming to churches. They're no longer looking to him for a source of their deliverance or their cures. And he's angry, and he said he's come here to stop you. I stood there on that platform and I looked at him. And I grabbed a microphone in my hand. I pointed him out and I said, You, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Jesus, the first and the last, Jesus who has all power in his hand. In the name of that Jesus Christ, I command you to leave now and never come back to this place ever again. And I banish you and I destroy your power and I break your power in this place and over these people. Now go in Jesus' mighty name. He took off like a shot. He never came back again. Meetings got better. The crowds got bigger. Years ago, some years ago, Gina was in an Uber. She was in this car, and the man who was driving her was listening to some gospel music. And Gina began to be familiar. She knew that song, and she, he said, oh, you, you know that song. And, and, and he said, she said, yeah. She said, I'm, I'm a Christian. He said, oh, I'm a Christian. He said, where, she said, where, where are you from? He had a very strong accent. He said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm from Africa. And she said, oh, where? And he said, I, I'm from Kenya. She said, where in Kenya? He said, oh, I'm in a little place you wouldn't know it. I'm from a little place called Suneka, Kisi. And she said, my father preached there years ago and he looked at her and he said what is your name and she said I'm Gina D'Angelo and she said my uncle was the witch doctor that your father drove out of the village he goes I will never forget it he said it was because of that I became a Christian can I tell you something this morning that the God we serve is able to heal and he is able to deliver and he is able to set free. He has all power in his hand and there is nothing and there is no one who can stop him when he decides to move in your direction. It is that kind of power from the original source that people yearn to be around and close to. Mark notes that even the evil spirits referred to Jesus as the Son of God. When the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. Isn't it amazing that even demons know Jesus is the Son of God and some people who are supposed to be smart deny it. Mark tells us they knew Jesus was doing miracles that no one had done. 
since the days of Elijah and Elisha. All of a sudden, those things were magnified. All of a sudden, those things were being done on a grand scale in ways that they had never seen before. No one was doing those kinds of healing miracles. And so people thronged and they flocked and they went through great effort to pursue this Jesus, the Son of God, the mighty, mighty miracle worker. And as they did, the Bible tells us that whenever the evil spirits saw him, they would fall down and cry out, you're the Son of God. But the crowd, it says, was there. He had healed many. Watch this. So that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. The eagerness to have both their physical and their spiritual maladies removed moved the crowd to do something. It said that the crowd pushed forward. Would you say they pushed forward? Look at your neighbor and tell them they pushed forward. Uh, the, the, the phrase there, they, they pushed forward, is the Greek word epipto, epipipto, and it means this. They used their arms to push out of the way what was in front of them so that they could get to him. They used their effort and they used their energy and they used their physical strength to move anything and anyone out of their way so that they could get to Jesus just to touch him. They used all of their effort and all of their strength and all of their energy and all of their physical faculties in order to get close enough so they could touch him. This morning, I came to tell you in this house that you have arms. I'm not expecting you to push somebody out of your way. I'm expecting you and asking you and encouraging you to use arms of faith, to use arms of belief. To push forward, uh, to touch Jesus, to push through your doubt, to push through your fear, to push through your pain, to push through your anguish, to push through your disappointment, to push through your despair, to push through the no that's been given to you by a doctor. I'm telling you now that there is enough faith in this room to reach and touch the power of Jesus Christ that is resident here by the Holy Ghost. Some years ago, I was in Vallejo, California, conducting a revival. And there was a woman there in a wheelchair. I was praying for the sick. People were getting healed. And all of a sudden, I saw her back there. And I, I'll be honest with you. I'll, I'll be real honest with you. Is it okay if the preacher is transparent this morning? Yeah. Come on, can I get some encouragement this morning? Say, just tell the truth, Pastor. Come on, just, just, just tell the truth. Amen. I, I, I saw her back there in that wheelchair, and I thought, I hope she stays back there. <laughs> let me give let, let her up uh, close and personal. I said, I, I, hope, I hope she stays back there. Huh. Brother Sean, I, I said, I hope, I hope she stays back there. Hey, amen. Sister Sarah, I said, I hope she stays. Vanessa, where you at? I said, I hope she stays back there. So I'm praying over here for people, you know, you got a headache, amen, in Jesus' name, you know, hangnail, you know, ingrown toenail. Don't take your shoe off, you know. We just believe that you're healed. All of a sudden, I looked over, and there was that lady in the wheelchair, right up front on my right. I did one of those, really? <laughs> I'd been preaching healing. I'd been preaching deliverance. I'd been preaching faith. We'd been seeing people healed and set free by the power of God night after night. And I walked over to the lady, and I said, ma'am. How long have you been in that wheelchair? She said, 14 years. Now, if she said four months, I'd be like, okay. And if she said like four days, I'd be like, okay, this one's easy, right? 14 years. I said, can you walk at all? She said, no. 
I said, do you believe Jesus can heal you? She said, absolutely. She said, I, I, I know you didn't see me. She said, but I used my arms to, ah, oh God. I used my arms to roll the wheels of my wheelchair so I could get up here. I was, I was, she said, I was pushing on that wheel so I could get here. She said, I believe, I believe Jesus can heal me. I grabbed hold of her hands. I didn't pray. I just simply spoke over her and I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the power of the living Christ, the Son of God, who has all power in his hands, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever, I command you to come out of the wheelchair right now in Jesus' mighty name. I had hold of her hands, and all of a sudden, I felt strength coming from her hands to mine. I felt her begin to push with her arms, and I saw her feet begin to move. I saw her legs begin to gain strength, and all of a sudden, those knees began to operate, and the thigh and the leg and the calf began to move like never before for the first time in 14 years, and I saw her begin to rise up. And all I had to do was just help her come up with her arms. And I said, come on, sister. Come on in Jesus' name. And she stood straight up to her feet. And she began to walk with me. And I began to ease her out just a little bit. And she stumbled a bit. And she moved slowly at first. And she looked at me and almost said, like, I don't know. And I said, come on, use that faith that got you up here. Use that faith that got you out of that wheelchair. Use that faith that caused you to be able to believe that Jesus could heal your body and all of a sudden she began to walk walk with me and all of a sudden I wasn't walking with both hands on her hands now we're arm in arm and we're going around the front of the sanctuary and then she got a little pep in her step and she began to run to the back down through the aisle and around the sanctuary and before you knew it she was running around on her own and I just stood back and let her go and said look at God God, look at God, look at God, look at God, won't he do it, won't he do it, won't he do it? I get emails from her every once in a while, pastor, I'm still out of that wheelchair, I'm still running for Jesus, and I ain't tired yet, this morning, I came to let you know that if you will use your faith and push, stretch your faith like you would stretch your arms and believe for Jesus to heal your body, your soul, your spirit, your mind. He's still the healer. He's still the deliverer. He's still Jehovah Rapha, the Lord your healer. Stand to your feet all over this room this morning.